Hello, today we'll talk about skincare. I will help you to build your perfect morning skincare routine, depending on the time you have available. Sometimes I find it that if when I watch other people's skincare routine, I find it unrelatable with the time that I have available. I'll share with you what I do for myself. I'm very busy in the morning. I try to sleep as much as possible. So I always have a reduced amount of time. So there are two steps that for me cannot be skipped. One is the cleansing and the second one is SPF. So if I really don't have time and I cannot do anything, even makeup, I don't have time for that, then these are the two things I will do using a cleanser and afterwards using an SPF and I'm ready to go. No makeup. These are the ones that I'm currently using. For example, this one is not my favorite, honestly, is this is clinical cleansing complex. It has a high viscosity, like a gel, but it doesn't wash out so fast as I expected. Right now I'm using this one for my face. And then the SPF that I currently have in use is the Color Science that I apply with uh, this brush that is the Sonia G base brush from the Lotus collection. Uh, this is an amazing pairing because this acts like a foundation. I don't use foundation since I use this. And is uh, we have seen it before. I have a video about it, but is a, um, a fluid that changes color and uh, actually becomes uh, darker uh, once you press the particles inside it. Is a little bit uh, lighter anyway, rather than my skin tone. But you see, once you blend it out, it becomes almost invisible. Slightly lighter, but it is perfect uh, for this time of the year. And this is for fair skin tones, but there are multiple shades of this. And I like because it is not overly glowy. It is a natural finish. What I like the best about this SPF is the fact that it's very reliable because it, it sticks on the skin. It's there. You know that it's there. You can feel it a bit, but that is the purpose of a SPF that is a good one, you know. So these are my basic steps. And then I can add things. Usually I tend to use at least a serum in the middle. And so I add a vitamin C serum. Currently, I'm using this Beauty Pie Super Active Capsules that are capsules with vitamin C and vitamin E. But I use them mainly for the vitamin C. I can show you how these are made and the capsules. This is my second bottle because I purchased directly two of them. Uh, since I have to import this from US, it was quite expensive. So, but I want to repurchase. And the reason is that this, you see the consistency is the cream. I don't particularly like this consistency. It stays a bit jelly and um, is a bit greasy for my liking. And to be honest, I don't see results in terms of evening out my skin tone or hyperpigmentation. I'm not noticing a huge improvement in the texture of my skin. With these capsules, I, yeah, I don't think they are as effective as other vitamin C, namely the SkinCeuticals uh, Cifrolic. That is still one of my favorites. I recommend vitamin C. Also because vitamin C improves the effectiveness of the SPF. So this is a perfect combo. Depending on the time, if you have more time, you can introduce a toner after the cleanser as a, a initial preparation before your serum. Right now I'm using this toner by Revision Skincare, Shooting Facial Rinse, is alcohol free. Personally, I want to purchase this, it's very nice, but personally I don't need to spend so much for a toner. I prefer cheaper alternatives. I don't believe in toners. 
-hmm. So especially when you use good cleansers, you know. And then maybe you want something that is more nourishing. You want a cream after the serum or you want to add actives. I would add a eye cream and the eye cream that I'm currently using is this one by La Mer. This since it's not as effective as I thought, I use it also under my eyes and then I lock it with a high cream. You may want also uh, something more nourishing on your skin before the SPF and in that case I'm currently using an antioxidant serum by Phytosurgeons and is the Verdant Force Field. Uh, this has an amazing in list of ingredients. I think it's perfect for the winter is the consistency that is very unique. There's a pump it has this green color and is how can I say is like jelly but also very nourishing the same like having ceramides. Um, is uh, quite glowy so for me is good right now but when it is warmer for me is too much so this is a nice prep when i need more hydration and nourishment on my skin so this would be before the spf another alternative more elegant i have to say is my victoria beckham cream by augustinus butter Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer. I prefer this as a prep for makeup. The SPF contrasts that glowiness that I get from this cream. But anyway, sometimes I use it. But for me, it's a little bit of a waste to use this SPF on top. Uh, this glows, let's say, when you use a very light uh, tinted moisturizer while this one sticks on the skin, so it's somewhat visible. Yeah, vanishes the elegance of this formula and the effect on the skin. But these are, let's say, alternatives. If you have even more time, you can add peptides. I use it for my under eye area, like this one, Revox, I think, seven peptide serum for expression lines. This is great, however, uh, to me it's too expensive for what it is. So this would be the sequence. Something for the lips. I'm currently using this one. This is a balm from Florasis. It's very nourishing and plumping. And maybe you can, in the serum area, uh, you can add something more targeted. For example, for my nose, I use this salicylic acid. It's a staple from Paula's Choice. This helps with blackheads and impurities in your T-zone. So this is my current morning skincare routine. What I use, what I do when I have more time. But the two basic steps are still these two. This combo is a must and I, I cannot do without a cleanser first and SPF. So this is how I pr prioritize the steps and the products that I use. I hope this was helpful for you and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.